and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues, and we're talking to candidates for statewide office. Well, uh, this week we're starting a three-week series for you viewers. Uh, we want you to meet your new Attorney General, State Attorney General, and we're having the three candidates uh, who filed for that office on in separate shows uh, for the next three weeks. The first week, uh, this week, will be Ryan Leonard, the Repub one of the Republican uh, uh, candidates for Attorney General. Uh, next week will be uh, Scott Pruitt. Week after that will be Jim Priest, and we'll be advertising uh, these shows equally. And we so we want to give to you the information you need to make an informed judgment about uh, for whom you're going to vote. And Ryan Leonard is today's guest. We'll get Indeed. to it right after this on the verdict. Natural gas is the gateway to a better world of energy. Instead of waiting, natural gas moves us forward now. Instead of finding ways to make dirty energy cleaner, natural gas simply is cleaner. We can use it to create our own energy, a wealth of new jobs, and keep more money here at home. Learn more at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Back to the set of the verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Really pleased today to have Ryan Leonard rejoin us. He's been on a couple of times before. Uh, Ryan is a Republican candidate for the Office of Attorney General for the state of Oklahoma. Ryan uh, did his undergraduate work at Boston University, his law work at the University of Oklahoma. He grew up in the Oklahoma Panhandle, uh, in the Beaver area, the fourth generation uh, Panhandle uh, resident. Uh, he is a former senior aide to U.S. Senator Don Nichols. He was an assistant district attorney in Canadian County. He's been in a very success successful private law practice here in Oklahoma City and is now running for attorney general on the Republican ticket, hoping to get your vote in the primary. Ryan, welcome. Ken, thank you. Mayor, thank you. Glad to have you. It's great to be here again. Uh, I don't have to tell any statewide <laughs> candidate that this is a big state. Tell us about uh, the campaign trail. <laughs> it is a big state. In fact, uh, in the last uh, 15 months, we have been to most of the counties many times. Uh, in fact, I was in Enid on Friday for, I think, what was our ninth trip to Enid. And I was thinking on the way up, I actually calculated it. If you calculate the miles, we actually have driven the equivalent of more than halfway across the country just driving to Enid and back. Not, not to mention the, the, uh, the uh, we have been to most of the counties uh, a number of times. So uh, it's been a wonderful experience to crisscross the state. Uh, this is a critically important campaign. I've, I've really enjoyed. Uh, well, what, what are you hearing out there? What are, what are voters telling you? Well, I think uh, people are concerned. I'm concerned. And frankly, it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm running. We're spending a lot of time talking about our very serious drug problem in this state. Uh, methamphetamine continues to be a very serious problem in this state. Public corruption uh, is a real priority of mine. I believe that uh, there's nothing that violates the people's confidence in their public officials more and in their government than, than those who violate the public's trust. So we're spending a lot of time talking about that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about what uh, I can do as the Attorney General to create jobs, to create a positive legal environment of certainty and consistency where we can grow our existing businesses and, and attract new businesses to the state. 
and also in light of what's going on nationally. Normally, you would not spend a lot of time talking about national issues in an attorney general's election, mm -hmm. but for example, the health care bill. I was one of the first in the country to actually come out and say, in my opinion, that the health care bill is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. The federal government can't mandate uh, that every American buy insurance, and I think it's appropriate uh, to be challenged by the attorneys general. So, uh, and that's just one example of, of of what I believe mm -hmm. are a number of uh, overreaches on the federal level. Some people are, are mad at Washington and they're going to put you on the spot. You're running in Oklahoma. Do you, do you get some of that, that, that a lot of the anger from an Oklahoma voter isn't really directed so much at Oklahoma politicians as much as it is their perception of Washington, D.C. in general? Well, I think people are rightly concerned. I'm concerned about the direction our country is headed. Uh, are you talking budgetary? What, what, are you talking part, morally? What, what, what are you talking about? Part of it's budgetary uh, from a spending standpoint. And these aren't Republican and Democrat problems. Under the, under the Republican administration, we went from a $5 trillion debt to an $11 trillion debt. Now our deficits uh, nationally are a trillion and a half dollars a year. Every year in 10 years will be $25 trillion in debt. We are on an unsustainable course. And I think part of the reason what we've seen with the Tea Parties, I've been to a number of Tea Parties, spoken to a number of Tea Parties. Uh, those aren't people who are Republicans or Democrats. Those are people who are concerned at, about the direction of the country. Mm -hmm. On many of these issues that raise both constitutional and legal issues, like the health care bill, I describe the attorneys general of the country really as the last line of defense in standing up and where you have a, a federal government that overreaches, uh, pushing back. And I think the health care bill is an, a real example of that. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Scott Pruitt the same question I'm asking you. Scott will be on next show. Uh, you have an opponent at the Republican nomination level. Uh, his name is uh, Scott Pruitt. How would you distinguish yourself uh, from Scott? Why should a Republican voter vote for Ryan Leonard instead of Scott Pruitt? Well, Scott's been a longtime uh, friend of mine. <laughs> the, uh, I'm running. You, you mentioned my background at the beginning of the show. I'm a former state prosecutor. As you know, the Attorney General is the chief law enforcement officer of the state uh, through the multi-county grand jury. I believe there's a real role for the Attorney General to step up and on issues like our serious methamphetamine problem. A lot of the issues we, we see now, uh, we're having meth come in uh, uh, from outside the country. Uh, issues that involve more than just the individual <coughs> jurisdictions of the district attorneys. I believe there's a real role for the attorney general to step up uh, and play a leadership role. I believe my experience, uh, the legislative time I spent working for former Senator Don Nichols in Washington, I uh, handled most of his Oklahoma issues, had the, uh, it was really an honor to, to spend most of that time, many of those days working on the floor of the U.S. Senate uh, for Senator Nichols uh, writing federal legislation uh, that benefited people here in Oklahoma. And in my private law practice, I have uh, fought the battles both in uh, state and federal court. Can't you and I have had a battle or two? Uh, always very collegial. Uh, yeah, but you always won. That's well, I, don't know I, about, like. I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll have to go back and check the record. But, uh, so I believe my experience uh, both on the uh, uh, criminal prosecution side, a critical, uh, critically important uh, component mm -hmm. of the job, in my opinion, and on the civil side. I fought the battles in state and federal court, and whether it's law enforcement or consumer protection, or really every issue that crosses mm -hmm. the desk of state government crosses the attorney general's desk. Regardless of the issue, uh, the battles will be oftentimes fought in court, and I believe uh, my experience uh, uh, qualifies uh, me to do just that for the people of the state. The environmental issues that have been going on in northeast Oklahoma primarily, how, what are voters up there wanting to hear about from the attorney general's office? Well, uh, General Edmondson has taken a, uh, a very proactive role, uh, which frankly is, uh, uh, you know, Drew is uh, enforcing, the job of the Attorney General is to enforce the law of the state. Five years ago, a lawsuit was filed uh, against uh, several uh, out-of-state uh, uh, poultry manufacturers, um, poultry producers. We all want clean water. Um, that case is, uh, is in court uh, under consideration by the federal judge there. I think that case will be resolved. Parts of it may, may be on appeal. Obviously, we all want clean water in the state, critically mm -hmm. important. We also want to create jobs in this state. Uh, you know, I believe, as I said earlier, the job of the Attorney General is to create a legal environment, a positive legal environment, where when issues arise, we try to resolve those in as constructive uh, a manner as possible. Uh, so with regard to that issue, I'm monitoring it very closely and will continue to do so, and we'll see where it ends up uh, after, uh, after the election. Mm -hmm. As a fourth generation Oklahoman and, a, and growing up in the panhandle, uh, how has that uh, molded uh, Ryan Leonard into the guy he is today? Well, I'm a, I'm a native of Beaver, as you mentioned. Beaver is a small town, about 2,000 people, uh, the first county in, in the panhandle. My grandfather, actually my great-grandfather, went to western Oklahoma in 1903 as a minister. They needed a minister in the territory, and that's how my family got to Beaver. I grew up working on the farm with my grandfather. I earned my, my Eagle Scout uh, that, while I was in Beaver. 
And, uh, you know, I, I built a lot of fence. In fact, some of that fence still stands. I learned a lot about hard work. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, uh, honesty and integrity. Very hardworking folks in the Panhandle. I'm very proud of my heritage there. We still have land uh, in the Panhandle. Uh, so uh, I really value uh, the experience. We also, uh, uh, I spent 14 years in Beaver and then came down and went to high school in Oklahoma City. So I kind of saw uh, both, both worlds. But, uh, um, I loved my experience growing up in the Panhandle and spent a lot of time, uh, in fact, I can tell all of my grandfather's stories. He farmed during the dirt storm years of the 30s, and I learned a lot from him, uh, and sometimes maybe maybe a little bit too much about, it, <laughs> about things like uh, independence. There was a time in life where maybe that was uh, maybe too much, uh, 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 too much of that, but it's, uh, um, I loved western Oklahoma. It's where I'm from, and it's, uh, it's a very fundamental part of who I am. Uh, <clears throat> tell us about what you're going to do. I looked at your website. Tell us about what you want to do about protecting families and children uh, from uh, dangerous criminals and drugs. I want to show up at the office every day and fight for the people of the state, which first and foremost, I believe, is the job of the state's attorney general. Uh, my wife, Carrie, and I have three young kids. Uh, frankly, of all the things that I worry about as a parent, uh, drugs is one of the most, and we need to keep our streets uh, and schools safe from drugs, uh, safe from child predators, people who prey on our children on the internet. I will do everything I can to find and prosecute those who would uh, wish harm to our children. Uh, I also talk about protecting our freedoms. I, I think that this really is a, a pivotal moment in our country's history. We're, I think, seeing the most massive federalization that we've seen in the history of our country. It really makes the the great society of President Johnson and the, the New Deal of President Roosevelt, all of that really pales in comparison. We're seeing a lot of governmental, th governmental authority uh, transferred away from the state and local governments, and, and there's an effort to move it to Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., and I think we need to resist that, and I think there is a very uh, important role for the Attorney General of Oklahoma and the Attorneys General of the states to play in resisting that uh, and standing up and when you've got a Congress that overreaches and, and pushing back and pushing back in court. Interesting. We'll be back with more. We have, we are visiting with Ryan Leonard. He's running for the state attorney general's office. And you're watching The Verdict. My name is Wyas Parker. I am 20 years old. I am a composer and I'm a Chickasaw. The way I prefer to express myself is through music. I like all the obvious guys, you know, Mozart, Beethoven. The way that I like to come up with music is really not to come up with it at all. I just like for it to kind of appear in my head. It's about listening. Uh, you have to be a good listener in music as in life. I would say the Chickasaw Nation stands for its people. I would want to be known as a Chickasaw composer who is trying to do great things with music. With all the opportunities that the Chickasaw Nation is offering its people, it's a great time to be a Chickasaw. What's your idea of security? A good paying, sustainable job? a solid economy, less dependence on foreign energy, we can achieve it with the help of one industry, American oil and natural gas. It creates energy, jobs, and a strong economic base we can rely on. New technologies open vast reserves that will supply our energy needs far into the future. Because security, by every definition, is worth protecting. Back to the verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent, where would you like to go to now? You mentioned a little bit uh, about protecting consumers. Tell our viewers what you would do as AG to protect Oklahoma consumers. Well, part of the job of the Attorney General not only is to represent the state, but also to stand up and fight for the people of the state. And that really is uh, illustrated, I think, in large part by the Consumer Protection Division. Uh, there are a handful of lawyers within the office whose job it is to stand up and fight for Oklahoma consumers. And frankly, in these times of identity theft and, mm -hmm. and uh, internet fraud, uh, I will do everything within my power to protect our seniors uh, who, who become, uh, fall, fall victim 
uh, to things like uh, uh, fraud on the internet and uh, and others who who uh, who fall victim to, mm -hmm. to scams. So well, I, will, I think it's a very important function of the office. Let me ask you about that. Would you do you think it's necessary that more resources of the AG's office be applied to that than has been uh, happening in the past? Well, part of the problem, as you know, uh, Kent and Mick, is the the state is facing very serious uh, budgetary issues. Uh, issues. The traditional budget of the Attorney General's office has been $29 million. It will not continue to be $29 million. Uh, traditionally, there have been 82 lawyers on staff. I understand that the current staff of the Attorney General's office, the law, it's somewhere in the 60 to 65 uh, attorney range. So uh, the trick will be, how do we do more with less? And I want to figure that out. You know, it how will can require a lot of hard work. Yeah, how can the Attorney General be involved in job creation? If, is that possible? The Attorney General is not the Chief Economic Development Officer of the state. However, I believe there is a very important role for the Attorney General to play in creating a positive legal environment. Like mm -hmm. I said earlier, of as much certainty and consistency in the law as you can, but where we can grow our existing businesses, attract new business here. So you know, obviously a number of these issues uh, fall within the purview mm -hmm. of the legislature. However, uh, sometimes as the Attorney General, it, it, it really gets down to how you solve problems because there is always a gray area in the law and problems will arise. Uh, do you bring people to the table? Uh, try to resolve them in a positive and constructive, and constructive manner? Do you rush straight to the courthouse? Uh, all of those things uh, uh, matter in creating a positive legal environment, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have no choice but to go to the courthouse. Do you consider yourself pro-business? I do consider myself pro-business. I'm pro-Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned just briefly that you're going to have a zero tolerance for public corruption, but how would you implement a zero tolerance for public corruption? What would you do? Well, I think what we've seen uh, the last uh, uh, six uh, months to a year, and obviously these are challenging economic times, we have seen a number of instances of individuals who are public employees uh, who have either had their hand in the till, embezzled money uh, from the state. In my opinion, when you do that, you need to be made an example of because I, I believe that the public officials should be held and must be held to a higher level. Uh, so uh, when someone violates the public trust, uh, most times, uh, probation, in my opinion, is not appropriate. You know, you need to, to throw the book at them. And uh, so when I say zero tolerance policy for public corruption, that's what I mean. And it's regardless of party. You do your job right as the state's attorney, and, and Kent and Mick, you both know this, mm -hmm. there is nothing that is or should be uh, political about enforcing the law of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when it comes to public corruption, it doesn't matter uh, who it is. Um, you apply the law fairly, honestly, and equally to all concerned, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what I'll do. Let me expand on something you touched on earlier, and that's the health care issue and whether or not it's constitutional for the federal government to mandate that individuals inside of states, obviously, um, carry health coverage. How do you deal with that as an attorney general, and what, do you think it's constitutional? I do not believe, in my opinion, the federal government can require every American to buy health insurance. That's exactly what the federal health care bill does. In fact, I saw uh, a poll recently that somewhere along the lines of 70 percent of the American people would like the law to be repealed. Uh, re the federal policy obviously has nothing to do with the Attorney General's office. What's, what's mm -hmm. the, uh, the job of the Attorney General is to make sure that Congress in this instance sticks within mm -hmm. its constitutional parameters. Never before in the history of our country has the federal government mandated the purchase of mm -hmm. any good or service. The state government can require the purchase of such things as car insurance right. because... I think a lot of people don't see the difference there, but what you're saying is that's a state requirement. It's a state requirement. Are you saying that the state could require health insurance? Well, I'm not saying that. <laughs> driving, is a, driving is a privilege, not a right. They're, okay, um, fair that, enough. That theoret you know, that's a hypothetical that I think would have to be explored. I don't think we'll see the state of Oklahoma requiring health insurance anytime soon. Uh, soon, but the, the legal question here is can the federal government, right. under the Constitution, the federal government is a government of and limited what, enumerated powers. What amendment or, or, or part of the Bill of Rights are we talking about here? It's really the Tenth Amendment. Uh, the Tenth Amendment uh, prescribes a, a, a limited federal government of certain explicit enumerated powers, and the Tenth Amendment says that the remainder of the powers are left mm -hmm. to the states and to the people. Uh, so what we're mm -hmm. seeing here is a um, those that would believe that this is constitutional, uh, they're saying that, that Congress can do this under the Commerce Clause. And I think that there have been several cases, well, there have been several cases in the last 10 or 15 years uh, which would suggest that uh, Congress can't do it. Um, it's not, it's, it runs contrary to the Constitution, runs contrary to the, to the, princi to the principles uh, uh, contained within the Constitution, in my opinion, and it should be challenged. The uh, principal 
challenge to the health care bill that I have heard articulated uh, by others is just what you have identified, the requirement that you buy insurance. But that bill is huge. That bill contains many, many, many other provisions. And a court could very easily say, we agree with you that that provision is unconstitutional, but the rest of it is constitutional. They could sever out the rest of it. Uh, would your <clears throat> approach to the health care bill it be attacking any other provisions of the, of the bill besides the mandatory insurance, or would it be limited to that? Well, the, which we've seen now, there are 14 attorneys general, a total of 19 states who have filed challenges to the health care bill. Uh, I think the individual mandate is the principal uh, legal issue. Yeah. Uh, other legal issues have been raised, but I think the, the principal legal issue is the individual mandate. Uh, however, if you take the individual mandate away, the economics of the bill uh, don't work. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only way this works is if you bring uh, a lot of healthy people into mm -hmm. the system. So, the, so you take the individual mandate away, uh, most of the, the bill uh, would fall, fall to the wayside. Speaking on an issue that again involves the federal government, illegal immigration, how, how would you, you deal with that at the state level? We're seeing a lot of, uh, and there has been a lot of talk about illegal immigration uh, since Arizona's decision to pass its law. I think really uh, whether it's what the action Arizona took, House Bill 1804, which uh, the Oklahoma legislature passed and was signed into law several years ago, although portions of that law have been declared unconstitutional. I will vigorously enforce the laws of the state of Oklahoma uh, as it pertains to illegal immigration. Uh, however, I will say that immigration is a federal issue, and what we're seeing out of Arizona and uh, in Oklahoma and other states really is a nothing more than a response to the federal government's either inability or unwillingness mm -hmm. to do its job in securing the borders. First and foremost, we have to secure the borders. So until you see a comprehensive federal immigration policy, we're going to continue to see actions uh, by the states. And I think, frankly, that they're mm -hmm. very appropriate actions by the states. Should a state attorney general consider the constitutionality of a federal law when it's trying to, to implement it? In other words, if you think it's unconstitutional, do you drop it on your priority list because you want the courts to deal with it? How, would, how do you deal with it? Because sometimes it can be very popular to take one side or the other. Well, when you're the state attorney general, it's not, it's not a question of whether it's popular uh, or not. Uh, my view on the health care bill has nothing to do with whether it's popular or not. The job of the Attorney General is to enforce the law of the state. The job of the Attorney is, is not to enforce uh, the federal law, but the, to, to enforce the law of the state. Uh, ideally, the state legislature passes laws that are constitutional. I think that there is an important role for the Attorney General to play in consulting with the legislature uh, prior to laws being enacted if there's a question uh, to ensure that those laws are mm -hmm. constitutional, and that's exactly what I would do. Just under a minute to go, we try to give each candidate an opportunity to, to sum up their views, why voters should consider Ryan Leonard for a State Attorney General. Well, first of all, it's been great to be here today, and I really appreciate the opportunity to come back. Uh, my interest is fighting for the people of the state of Oklahoma, uh, getting in there, doing the right thing, showing up, showing up at the office every day, doing everything I can to enforce the law fairly, uh, justly, honestly. And, and standing up for, for the people's rights and doing the best job I can as the state's lawyer. Uh, I believe my experience uh, both in the state, uh, in federal courts, and as a state prosecutor, and my time working in Washington, in addition to uh, my time uh, having grown up in western Oklahoma, I learned a lot uh, growing up in western Oklahoma, uh, and in rural Oklahoma. Um, but really, fundamentally, my interest is getting in there and fighting, uh, fighting for the people of the state, enforcing the law, uh, cracking down on our drug problem, prosecuting those who violate the public trust, doing everything I can to create jobs as the state's attorney general. And on these federal issues, I really believe that these are momentous times in our country. And I think it will require a strong attorney general to stand up and push back when Congress overreaches, and that's exactly what I'll do. Ryan Leonard is running for state attorney general for Oklahoma. Ryan, thanks for coming on The Verdict. Thank you very much. Thank you so right. much. Great and to be here. Kent and I'll have a final word right after this. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa. 
where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We are wrapping up a show with Ryan Leonard. He's a candidate for Attorney General for the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, the first of our three candidates for uh, Attorney General. Folks, you're going to see your new attorney, attorney General on The Verdict uh, this week, next week, or the next week. Mm -hmm. Because next week we've got uh, the second candidate coming up, Republican uh, Scott Pruitt. The week after that, we'll have uh, the Democratic candidate, uh, Jim Priest. So we'll give our viewers all three. Those guys are crisscrossing the state, uh, giving speeches, uh, kissing babies, trying to raise money. I can't imagine uh, what, a, what a chore it is to, to run a statewide office, and, and this is a, a fairly contested race as well. Well, it, it, indeed, in this kind of a budget year and mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the things they have to deal with, uh, they are really running hard, and they're trying to uh, uh, let our viewers know what they'll do if elected, and they, they will have a lot to do, that's for sure. Well, this show is dedicated to Ryan Leonard. His website is mm -hmm. ryanleonard2010.com. That's ryanleonard2010.com. And I want to pass on some website information for our show. If you have an idea for a, an upcoming topic, let us know. Go to theverdict.tv and send it to us. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.